Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to my kitchen, not the garden today. Today we're going to be making a rose clay bath bomb. Now the good thing about rose clay, um, this is going to be on our natural colorant. So if you're one of the people who don't like to use colorants, uh, this is a natural colorant and it'll be gorgeous and you, I think you'll like it at least. I'm just going to get started using my normal bath bomb recipe that I pretty much use all the time. I'm going to start out with my baking soda and of course when you make these you can run these ingredients through a sifter if you'd like, uh, get the clumps out and everything. I usually just dump things in and get the clumps out later, uh, either while I'm mixing or with my hands or whatever. It's just up to you, uh, whatever you want to do. After I've added the baking soda, our next ingredient is of course citric acid because hello, without citric acid there's not going to be any kind of fizz in our bath fizzies and that would be totally lame. For the most part, I usually do just a 2 to 1 ratio of baking soda to citric acid. You can play with that number a little bit. After I've added my baking soda and my citric acid, then I'm going to move on to add my salts. Uh, normally I would add a little bit of Epsom salt. I was actually out of Epsom salt for this video, so I'm just using some coarse dead sea salt. These pieces are really big. Um, ideally you wouldn't want to use coarse. Maybe fine or small would be better, but we're just going to make do with what we have. Last but not least for our dry ingredients for this bath bomb, we're going to be using rose clay. I really love rose clay. It has this nice um, color. And not only that, the clay is going to help to harden our bath bombs. If you're somebody who has, you know, trouble with soft bath bombs or ones that fall apart, the clay can definitely help with that problem. So after I've combined all of my dry ingredients and gave them a good mix around, I'm just going to set those off to the side. And then we'll be ready to uh, work with our wet ingredients. So for our wet ingredients, 4% of our recipe is going to be a sweet almond oil and 2% is going to be polysorbate 80. Polysorbate 80 is just going to help the oil work into the water. And, um, you know, it, you don't have to use polysorbate 80 if you don't want to, but it's important to keep in mind you're using oil. These bath bombs are going to make your tub slippery and make you slippery, so safety first. Now, in this recipe, I'm using sweet almond oil, but you could very, very, very easily have a rose-infused sweet almond oil or rose-infused oil of your choice. Um, I just didn't have time to do it, but normally I probably would. Uh, also, with the fragrance of this, you could always go with something like rose absolute or rose geranium. I think would be absolutely gorgeous. I just went with an English rose fragrance oil. Um, that's just what I had. So after my liquids are ready, I am going to just pour this directly into my dry ingredients. You'll know that it's well combined when you grab a handful and give it a squeeze and it stays held together. I mean, if you've seen any other bath bomb recipe in the world, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. If it is still not wet enough, the mixture is still not wet enough, you can just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and you can spritz the mixture with rubbing alcohol until it reaches that, you know squeeze it and it stays together stage. So the last step in this that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my beautiful dried rose petals. These rose petals came from my Paul Neron roses earlier in the season. You'll remember if you're using your own rose petals, make sure that they have not been sprayed with pesticides or anything like that because we want to keep this as beautiful and as natural as possible. And we don't want none of that nasty stuff in our tub with us. Why are you trying to enjoy your nice bath, okay? So last but not least, I put a generous helping of rose petals in here, gave it a mix around, and now it is time to fill up our mold. Uh, once the mold is filled, uh, you're pretty much done. Just wait for it to harden. Usually I personally wait one or two days before I use these. You could use them sooner if you would want. And of course, you would have to wait for them longer if you want to package them up and actually like send them out to people or give them to people. Because you want to make sure that they are fully hardened. Now, there's not a demo for this one. Um, this bath bomb actually turned out really lovely. I used it. If anything, maybe I would use just a little bit less rose clay. Uh, I had some kind of stick to my tub after it was all said and done. So maybe I would use just a little bit less. The watercolor was a beautiful pink. And it was so relaxing. I will definitely be making this one again. Hopefully this video was somehow helpful. I'm not sure if it was. Uh, if it was, I'd love for y'all to subscribe. Love to have you. 
making new videos pretty frequently in the garden, making, you know, bath goodies, all kinds of just different stuff and different projects that I get myself into. I hope y'all are having a real great day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.